I work at the University of Georgia and, and I talk to athletes every day about different issues related to performance and nutrition. I can tell you one thing, that your mental preparation, your physical training, and your coaching probably make up about 75% of your performance. And I'd say the other 25% is, is what you eat, your nutrition. That, that is what makes your body peak to its uh, peak ability in terms of performance. And if you don't think so, think about some of the foods that you eat that may upset your stomach. Or if you don't eat in, in the morning and you get kind of agitated because you're a little bit hungry, uh, it affects your behavior, your personality. It definitely affects your body and how you perform. So just remember that if you want to go, uh, you, you, in basketball, men's basketball, you play UNC this year? Okay, I know that the schedule, I've seen some of your schedules. Who's that? Clemson? So you got Clemson. Clemson typically has a, a good basketball team. Uh, University of Georgia, I know that, uh, I think you guys have played Georgia once in the last couple of years, I think, but, but anyway, I know that you've got, you've got a good basketball team, but what you've done, come on in guys, there's a, a whole, there's five seats here, there's one here. They always say don't show up late or don't miss the meeting, you'll get the assignment. <laughs> but, uh, all, the only point I'm making to you is take advantage of every edge you can get on the competition, and that means your, your diet, your nutrition. If you do that, then, then you're going you're gonna to maximize what you can do. Now, I've got all these things up here that I could talk about. I may not talk about them all. What are you interested in hearing about? What are the, some of the things that, that you don't know that you'd like to hear, learn more about? All right. Okay, what sport are you? Basketball, all right. Anybody else? Weight management. Weight management, all right. So from a standpoint of just uh, uh, obtaining uh, optimal weight, the weight that you want. What else? All right, anyway, we can talk about that too. Anything else? Okay. How many of you use supplements? What do you use? just a one a day supplement type thing. Now, you know, uh, I think, I can't remember, but it was a couple of years ago the NCAA eliminated funds coming into universities to support supplementation so that everybody could be on more of an equal playing field. Um, and that, I know that a lot of programs were, uh, were providing creatine for weight training during the off season and so forth. And, um, but any, well, we'll talk a little bit about that. Anything else? How many of you just drink plain water to hydrate? Okay. Now, how many of you think sports drinks are, are better than plain water? Or plain water is better? How many of you think sports drinks are better? All right. They are better. And we're going to talk about that. There's old Ugga. We had him on a diet. <laughs> now that, but you guys are bulldogs too, so uh, we have a little something in common. Uh, but, but we do this, we have a sports nutrition group that works in our lab that uh, sees athletes. We do body composition, we do nutrition counseling, we meet with teams. We talk with the basketball team, football team, about weight gain, er everything that you can think of, everything that you're mentioning here. So if you have a question, uh, you know, please ask. I mean, these are the types of athletes that we work with, all kinds of sports. I think one of them that, that you guys don't have here is swimming and diving uh, and gymnastics. But baseball, basketball, and you don't have football. What's that? The track team should be on there because that's the most important. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I like to run, so I'm a believer in track and field. But these are some of the questions that uh, athletes have asked, you know, what do, what do I eat before an event? And some people, how many of you have ever tried that Atkins diet to lose weight? Don't do it if you have. It doesn't work. Uh, and it's not healthy for athletes, especially for athletes, because you guys need carbohydrate. Uh, so anyway, we're going to talk about some of these uh, uh, issues here. 
the key thing that I want you to get out of this, at least initially, is, is how important carbohydrate is in your diet. You've got to have it. What it is, it's like, it's like putting gas in the, in the car. And if you don't put it in, the car dies. And that, that really is the same analogy. Carbohydrate gives you energy to do those short bursts. If you're a triple jumper, or if you're a high jumper, or if you're, uh, if you're playing in a zone all of a sudden, that movement to go up to the basket to get that rebound, to box out that guy, to get the rebound, that brief, intense jump is, a short, is an example of something that's short and intense and it requires carbohydrate. To, the carbohydrate in your quads and your calves, that's where the energy's coming from to, to make that jump, to get up on that board. Longer duration, moderately intense activities. I think of that as something like cross country running. But I also think of it like this, baseball. Think about baseball. How long can a baseball game last? Three, three hours? More sometimes? <coughs> I mean, look at the World Series. What was that, that one game? Oh, my goodness. That lasted forever. So, and that's a, t a period of time where you're not even eating. You're going all that time, and you're out there, out, you're out there in the field, occasionally doing these short bursts of, of activity, running to first base, but also doing this long duration, kind of going through the, the motions, maybe making a couple plays, but you're doing it over a long period of time. Same with tennis. So, you need that carbohydrate for that too. So, that's, that's where fatigue runs in. If, you're, if you fatigue early in, in competition, in training, in, in practice, there's a good chance that your diet doesn't have enough carbohydrate in it, that you're not eating right. You can prevent that fatigue. Of course, if you work hard enough, eventually you're gonna get tired and regardless of what you eat, but most of the time, if you guys will focus on these carbohydrate foods, then you can refill your muscle energy stores a lot better. Who, somebody tell me what you had for breakfast this morning. Give me an example. What'd you have for breakfast? Bowl of cereal and bagel. Bowl of cereal and bagel. All right, what kind of cereal? Oh, uh, it like brand cereal and raisins. All right, brand cereal with raisin. What kind of milk do you have on that? Skim milk. Skim milk, that's good. Did you put any fruit on it? Nah, just the raisins. All right, see, I, what I'd do is I'd put a little fruit on that thing just to add a little bit more carbohydrate, get a little bit fruit and vegetables in your diet, which is important. Uh, and then, the, or you could have a, a cup of juice, you know, orange juice with that or something like that. But the bagels, did you put anything on the bagel? Just some butter. Butter? Okay. Now. You know what I would have done instead of the butter and brown sugar, although that's, I might say, one thing I will never ever tell an athlete is don't eat a certain food. There should be no food that you shouldn't be able to eat any, you know, you just don't want to eat it all the time, that's all. What I would say is get a little bit more protein in that meal, uh, maybe a little peanut butter or some melted cheese on that bagel. That would be a better combination than the butter because it's going to be about the same amount of calories, but you're going to be getting protein and calcium from the cheese or protein from the peanut butter. So that would be a better combination for that breakfast, but that's good. Uh, that's definitely a high carbohydrate breakfast, and that's what, that's what we're talking about right here. Vegetables, remember this. There's a campaign in this country to get people to eat more fruit and vegetables. Five a day is what you need. Five fruits and vegetables a day, and most people don't get it. So just remember this, when you went, I went through the lines today, anybody eat the greens that they had? They had it looked like turnip greens. Those are great for you, those are great for you. you eat those greens, they had some uh, mixed vegetables and tofu, a lot of people say, ooh, tofu, you can't even taste tofu. You, if you ate it, you wouldn't even know you ate it. You can't even taste it, but it's good protein. It's a vegetable source of protein from soy. But anyway, these are the types of things that you want to focus on, but you don't want to get all those sugar cereals and, and then drink a little milk in, in, a, in a glass of lemonade and walk out of the dining hall. That's horrible. You got to get fiber in there, so you want to get some a banana in there. You want to get some brand cereals like you were eating uh, and, get some, and, and make it a little bit better meal. Get a little bit of protein, maybe a half a bagel with cheese or an egg on it. 
And, and, and that'd be a good combination. The other thing is the energy gels, sports bars, and sports drinks all provide a source of carbohydrate. How many of you eat the, uh, the, carb, the, the energy gels, the goos? Anybody? I don't know. I tell you, a lot of long distance runners use them. But overall, I think a lot of people uh, it may be too concentrated an energy source, kind of upsets the stomach or whatever. Sports bars, how many of you eat sports bars? Now, do you use them like as a snack or do you use them for meals? How, how do you guys you, it, Snack? Yeah, d yeah, you don't want to use it as a replacement for a meal. You know, if you're, if you're on the run. My son's a freshman at Georgia. And I was telling the group earlier, and he'll sleep until the last second. And then, he, and then he's gone and goes to class. And so instead of a sports bar, what he does is keep bagels, peanut butter, cheese, and yogurt and things like that. Something he can grab quick and go to class. So he doesn't miss breakfast because breakfast is the most important meal of the entire day for athletes, non-athletes, for everybody. Period. Don't miss breakfast. Make sure you get something. <laughs> But the sports drinks, and I'm going to talk to you about these in, in just a minute. There's no question these are, are advantageous to the athlete for basketball, for baseball, uh, for soccer, for whatever sports that you're going to be doing, running, track and field. Now, let's talk a little bit about this pre-event eating and, and address the question about the pre-game, pre-event meal. Before you exercise, you need to get your muscle stores of, of carbohydrate maxed out. So you, you, you've got to have something before you, you want good carbohydrate before exercise. Then during exercise, I know that, I'm trying to remember, Georgia was playing baseball last year and they, they, they made it fairly, I'm trying to think, they did make it to, uh, to Nebraska if I'm not mistaken. Or no, they didn't, they were one game shy of going. But, but the, my point is they were, they were playing several games back to back. And by the time they got to uh, in the regionals with Texas, I mean, they were, they were just, they were, they were tired. They were, you know, but that's where this, during exercise, you've got to be eating little bits of food. Uh, I would have bananas, I'd have crackers, I'd have Gatorade, I'd have all that available in the, in the, in the dugout so that you can have little bits of this every so often, every 15, 20 minutes to keep your energy levels up, even if you're not playing that much. Because you, you're probably still gonna be hungry because you're not eating. You're going for a period of time without even eating a meal. And then after exercise is absolutely critical, and I'll give you an example of this in just a second. So pregame meal. All right, give me an example, basketball. What, what do you have for pregame? It sounds great. I mean, it sounds really a, like a perfect combination for a pregame meal. Um, and, and does that work for you guys? Or um, we got some guys that didn't like it as much because we eat it really early. Yeah, we like four, four hours before the game. I guess we don't really know. You know what? I, I remember talking about that this, this uh, today at lunch. We were talking about some of the athletes still being hungry by the time they start playing. You don't want to be hungry when you start playing. You want to be satisfied. That's what I put right up there. Satisfy your hunger and avoid any kind of gastrointestinal problems. So if, you, if your body, if you get nervous but you can still tolerate food and you're still hungry, you probably ought to eat something. Even if it's, uh, I think the coach was saying somebody was eating raisins or something, a handful of raisins or something. That was good. That's a, whoever did that, that was a good thing to do. Um, I would say, uh, uh, stuff like a banana, uh, something that's bland, something that's not going to, you know, you don't want to eat a slice of pizza or something, you know, I mean, you know that's, it's going to upset your stomach. So you want to eat something bland. Um, you may be able to even tolerate a bowl of cereal, you know, something like that, just to stave off the hunger, keep your energy levels up. You don't want to go into, you don't want to go into exercise, into a game where you're feeling like, man, I'm starved, I'm hungry. Because then if, that, if you're feeling that way, then your blood sugar levels are probably a little bit lower than they need to be. You need to have them elevated up. So what you need to do is come up with a list of foods if you're one of those people that gets hungry 
Uh, I, my recommendation would be to, to keep the pregame meal at that time point to, so the other athletes that don't uh, get hungry before the game have enough time to digest that food. And then for those that do get hungry and still could eat something, uh, you know, a little, uh, it doesn't have to taste good. It can take, you can take, a, you can take a, a slice of a piece of French bread with no butter, nothing on it, and just eat it. And it'll, it'll serve its purpose. It'll give you carbohydrate energy, it won't upset your stomach, and it'll take care of your hunger. Don't worry about taste. Other thing is you gotta be hydrated. And we'll go, again, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I don't wanna talk about it every time I get to these different slides. Now, how much do you eat? You gotta figure that out yourself. Uh, typically, it's gonna be about 1,000 calories for a male athlete. Three to four hours, like we we're saying. I used to, when I used to run, I couldn't eat, I couldn't run unless I'd eaten four hours before. Now I can eat, well, I, I ran today around UNC Asheville, and having eaten at 2.30, I ran two hours later. I didn't feel that good either, but my point is, you, you never know what your body can tolerate. So you need to kind of become familiar with how you eat and how you practice. Um, Simple sugars, you don't want to get into candies and syrups and things like that. So if you're eating pancakes, go easy on the syrups uh, or, and, and on the jellies and on the sweet things like that. What that does, if you ever wake up in the morning sometime and have a, a, something sweet like a donut or two donuts and a Coke or a cup of coffee or something, then about an hour later you feel like you hit rock bottom, your blood sugar level goes real high when you eat that and then it drops even harder when you, when, uh, about an hour later, so try to avoid doing that. Protein, chicken, fish, meats, cheeses, peanuts, all those are good sources of protein. The pro protein is very important for all athletes, but one of the things about protein is a lot of male athletes think, boy, I'm gonna get more protein in my diet to build more muscle. Well, most of you probably don't do enough weight training to where your protein requirement would be even higher based on the amount of weight training that you're doing. And I'm gonna show you something just in a minute, but the other thing about protein is if you eat too much protein in your pregame meal, then your body's gonna need more water because protein requires water to digest. And if you eat a lot of protein, like if you ate three big chicken breasts, and uh, uh, you know, a big glass of milk and, and, and just a lot of protein, high protein food, then your body is gonna need more water. You're gonna need to drink more water. So especially in hot weather, or if you're playing in a gym uh, where it's hot, uh, try, to, try to go easy on the protein, go more on the pasta and the, and the carbohydrate foods. But still, you want some protein in that meal, but just not excessive amount. Now, Cross country, track and field, you may have a meet that may go several hours. And you may compete early in a heat, you may go later. One rule of thumb is that over time, if you're gonna be competing for several hours in a baseball game, tennis match, potentially a basketball game, uh, four to six ounces of carbohydrate fluid every 15 to 20 minutes. That will keep your blood sugar levels up. And that'll help provide energy, it'll provide fluid for you that you need, and that's, that is really what you wanna do. Um, and, and the reason why is because your muscle levels of, of, of glucose, of, of carbohydrate, start to, go, to give out, and your blood level is where you get your energy to keep going. But if your blood level dr drops because you're not eating or drinking during the competition, then you're gonna get tired or fatigued early. And, and the research has shown that if you do this every four to six ounces, four to six ounces every 15, 20 minutes, you can keep the blood sugar levels up and it delays fatigue. So that's, that's an important point. Now, after, the perfect example I like for this are you know, the different conference tournaments that you get into, basketball, baseball, whatever. You potentially could be playing on a Thursday a Friday, a Saturday, and a Sunday, potentially. That's four, four games in a row. Now, in basketball, for example, how many games a week do you play? Two, max, sometimes one, but usually two. 
maybe three sometimes. But you get in a tournament, you go back to back. What happens is your muscles are starting to get low on the fuel. And you've only got a certain amount of time to, to, to fill it back up. You've got 20 hours. It takes 20 hours to fill it back up. And if you don't start eating right when you get walk off the court in a basketball game or uh, a baseball game, you have to eat right afterwards. That's when your body's going to make the most energy in the muscle. It's going to make it a lot more rapid right after you get through than waiting two hours. So if you wait two hours, then you're losing the opportunity to replenish your muscle energy stores. And that could be crucial for that next day. So that definitely can affect your performance, no question. I remember I was trying to get a hold of, uh, I guess it was at the time uh, Coach Herrick was coaching basketball at Georgia. And they got into a tournament and they were keeping going. And the players, they, were, they didn't have 10 great players. They only had five good players and they were playing them a lot. And those guys were getting tired. So we, I got a hold of the trainer. We talked to them about trying to maximize their carbohydrate intake so they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't uh, fatigue out that third or fourth game. Now I'm going to skip through this. This is the shut-in run that, that happened here this weekend in Asheville area. Uh, just to show you that everybody goes to their own drummer. Here's a, a, a menu of different things. This is at mile 15. This is what you could get at the shut-in run. You get nuts, you can get bananas, M&Ms, chocolate. The point is they're trying to get energy in these long-distance runners. You get to mile 15 going up Mount Pisgah, you're dead dog tired. I mean, and so what they're trying to do is to keep you, keep your energy levels going up the whole way. If you wait till the end, it's going to be too late. The other thing you see is Rolaids. What are the Rolaids there for? Cramps. cramps. And, 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 and what we're learning about cramps is that a little bit of extra sodium or salt in those people that sweat a lot is going to help you probably. I, I sweat a lot and I cramp a lot. But I, what I do is I take about a third to half of a teaspoon of salt and put it in a, in a gallon of Gatorade, mix it up, and that helps me uh, because I lose so much sodium and fluid and, and sweat that, uh, and it helps prevent those cramps. Now, when you get through competing, for, give me somebody, who's a baseball player? Anybody? All right, well, what do you guys do after a game? You just go on home and, and do your thing, or do you have a team meal, or? So we just kind of fend for ourselves, at the, at the apartment door. Right, so it could be several hours afterwards. Well, see, I, I'm telling you, if I were a baseball player, after maybe going three hours of not eating and knowing that you may have a game the next day and you, and you, you played a lot and you're tired, I would have something right there ready to go, whether it's liquid, if it's, if it's Gatorade or Powerade or something, or uh, a banana, a bagel, something. I'd have something to eat on until you got to your meal. Uh, we, we recommend that they keep coolers around so that they can have uh, that type thing, yogurt, something like that, you know, they can eat on and keep their energy levels up. So really, so far what I've been telling you is not only is carbohydrate important, but I've been telling you it's not only what you're eating, it's how you're eating and planning your eating. That's the key things. And there's an example of what, if you had a sandwich, a uh, turkey sandwich on whole wheat afterwards and some applesauce or, or an apple or whatever, that'd be, that'd be perfect for right afterwards. Because remember, the muscle, your muscles are going to make more energy, stored energy, right after you get through than if you wait two hours. So if you fend for yourself, go back to your apartment, and the next thing you know, your game's over at, let's say, 6.30 or 7, you get home and you get distracted and it's 9, 9.30, and you got a game the next day, you've already put yourself at a disadvantage going into the next day. So you've got to keep that edge. The other thing is, if you're not eating enough carbohydrate, you'll get fatigued. And, and what happens when you get tired and fatigued? injury. And, and I'm telling you, I've, I've seen it, uh, again, my experience is with running, and so when you see runners that get tired, fatigued, uh, their energy levels are low, uh, they're not paying attention to what they're, they're doing, they hit a branch or something on a trail, uh, sprain an ankle, do something, because they're not focused. Protein.
Some athletes need more protein. Strength training athletes, athletes that do a considerable amount of strength training. How many, how many of you are on weights? All year round. Okay. Now, you may need a little bit more protein. You may need a little bit more. The recommended amount, how much do you weigh, for example? About? All right, so you're about 70-something kilograms, if we convert it to kilograms. Um, that's what that kg is, is kilograms. So if, if the regular requirement for you is 0.8 grams per kilogram, and we say it's 70, 70 times 8 is about 56 grams of protein. So about 60 grams of protein is your requirement per day, about. That's, that's what the Food Nutrition Board, National Academy of Sciences, would say that your protein requirement is. Let's say because of your weight training, it's going to be a little bit higher. It may be up around 1.4. All right, so let's say 1.4, one and a half times, uh, <coughs> times your, your body weight in kilograms. So if you weigh about 75 kilos, one times that is 75, and then half of that, to, so it would be about 100 grams of protein per day is what you would need. But let me tell you something. I guarantee you that if I did a diet record of your day's intake, most Americans get over 100 grams of protein in their daily diet. So my point is you don't need to go and take a pr protein supplement or shake or something like that to try to help build more muscle if you're on a, only if you're on a, an intense weight training program do you really even need more protein anyway. So the protein that you do take if you take a, how many of you take a protein supplement? All right. Now, what happens with that supplement is if, if you're getting enough food in your diet, then that protein is going to cause you to gain weight because you're taking in more calories than you need. The second thing is what I said earlier is that if you take in so much protein, then you're going to need, you're going to, your fluid requirements are going to be a lot higher. So, uh, it's really not necessary. It's not going to benefit you in terms of muscle gain. Only if you're doing enough high intensity strength training uh, would your protein requirement be higher. The supplements are not needed. And I'm, I think I'm going to go to, tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to here and talk about supplements. Well, let me go back to here, other nutrients. A lot of you guys think that calcium is for females, women, that they need it for their bones and men don't need it. You know what? That's a myth. I've had several men, big, strong, muscular men, get on our instrument that we have in our lab to measure their bone density and find out that they've got low bone density, low bone mass, low amount of calcium or mineral on their bones, and that they're at risk for fractures. Now, all, all point I'm making is you got to get calcium in your diet. Calcium you mainly get from dairy products. You need about four servings a day of dairy foods, cheese, milk, yogurt, whatever, uh, to get that 1,300 milligrams. You need to get it right now because by the time you're 30, you won't be building any more bone. You'll be losing bone. You, you've only got another 10-year window left to make a little bit more bone, and that's only in your spine. That's not your hip. You're already, your hip, you already got as much as you're going to get. So you've, all, you've got about another 10 years left to make more bone in your spine, and, and, then, it, and then that opportunity is gone forever. And, and the way to do that is with good calcium diet. And if you don't like calcium from dairy products, you can get it in fruit juice. They've got calcium fortified juice. Uh, and you can get it in, in green leafy vegetables, but really it's best from dairy products and from your juices. And if you don't get it that way, take a supplement. Vitamin D is really not a problem. Iron's not really a problem for you guys, unless you're vegetarian uh, and you don't eat any meat at all, because meats are your best source of iron. Um, antioxidant nutrients, what I'm talking about is fruit and vegetables. See that shirt color red? There's one that's orange over there. You need to be eating lots of red, orange, and green fresh vegetables and fruits for your health. We're finding out so much about these fruits and vegetables that are beneficial to health. Not only they got, and not only that, they got carbohydrate and they're gonna provide energy for you. And they got fiber, help keep you regular. 
So there are a lot of benefits to the fruit and vegetables. You need to plan to do five a day. Tomorrow, count how many fruit and vegetables you get and see if you get five a day. Total of fruit and vegetables. Now, we talked about supplements. Most of you don't need a supplement. My son, a freshman in college, he takes a one-a-day multiple vitamin mineral supplement. He's been taking it his whole life. He doesn't really have to have it because he eats fairly well. But, you know, if he wants to take it and feels comfortable taking it, there's no problem. There's not going to be any excess that he's going to get or deficiency that he's going to get. So that's fine. Um, the other thing is, uh, again, I mentioned the total vegetarian issue. Uh, for women athletes that really, some athletes where they just don't eat enough, they may have some problems. But for you guys, probably, you're not going to need to worry about it. What about creatine? How many of you use creatine? Okay. Now, there was a review that was just written, and, uh, and basically, it can improve performance in high, brief, and in high intensity activity lasting less than 30 seconds. So, if you're talking about a repetition, you're doing some weight training, what it may be able to do is give you another rep. That's what, see creatine is, in, it's, it's stored in the muscle, it's a source of energy, but it, you only have enough to store for, for just seconds of activity. So uh, a good friend of mine up at University of Massachusetts, and another guy, uh, Priscilla Clarkson, and my friend in, in Rawson, wrote this review and, and basically said that not every athlete benefits from it. Some do, some don't. Uh, there was, a, there was huge concern about adverse side effects like cramping. Uh, there was a guy, his name was Ed Eyestone, and he was a 10 kilometer road race uh, runner. He was, he was in the Olympic trials back in, I guess when it was Atlanta, it was 96. And that was when the big creatine craze was going on. I mean, everybody was taking creatine. Well, he started taking creatine. He got into the, uh, the Olympic trials, 10 kilometer road race, and cramped up and couldn't finish. So a lot of people thought, well, maybe it was the uh, creatine that caused that. We're not sure. Uh, in her review, she says it probably doesn't have that many adverse side effects. But the thing is, it's only for that brief high intensity activity. Basically, we're talking about strength training. It's not gonna help you in a long jump. It's not gonna help you hitting the baseball. It's not gonna help you going up to the, to the, uh, the backboards to get a rebound uh, or run to the fence to catch a ball. It's not gonna help you. It's not, it's not gonna do it. Um, plus, there may be undesirable side effects in terms of, well, some people say weight gain and, and other issues like that. But um, again, it, overall, the overall review of, of the science says it, for specific high intensity weight training activity only does it benefit. And, and, that, and, that, and even then there's a lot of variability from individual to individual. So some may, may see it, some may not. Now, at Georgia, we got a problem with dehydration. It's the fans that we worry about. <laughs> no, I, I make a joke about it, but uh, you get out in that hot sun and, and throw a little, uh, uh, too much alcohol, uh, and you, you got a, a heavy dehydration situation. So, let me tell you one rule of thumb that everybody's got to follow, and that's to, to know, and this sounds crazy, but know your urine color. Know uh, if you get a urine color that's the color of a dark iced tea color, that's too, that's too concentrated. What you want it is it to look like, uh, really like water. You want it to be clear. If it's clear, then you're hydrated. If it's that darker color, then you're dehydrated and you need to drink. That should be your signal. You should drink until your urine is clear. So that's, that's the, the, uh, the big issue. And I tell you what, it, it, uh, it really uh, is important, uh, probably when I talk about nutrition affecting performance, this may be one of the biggest factors uh, that can affect whatever you do in terms of your competition. 
um, drink on a schedule. How many of you carry water bottles to class? All of you should have water bottles. Every one of you should be carrying a water bottle with you in your backpack and drinking on a regular basis. I asked you the question before, are sports drinks better than plain water? Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Number one, they taste better, so you'll drink more. And if you drink more, then you get more fluid in your body. You're rehydrating better. It provides a little bit of sodium, uh, and it provides energy to re resynthesize, to refuel your muscle energy levels. Plus, a lot of athletes can't tolerate solid foods during practice or during competition, uh, so that this provides the advantage of giving them energy, but in a liquid state so they can tolerate. And you may not be able to tolerate full strength Powerade, Gatorade. You, you could dilute it, dilute it in half with water and try that if, if for some reason it doesn't work. Uh, here are tips. I've got handout. I've got tons of handouts for you guys on this stuff. So I'm going to give it to you. But I want to make a special comment about uh, the caffeine, alcohol. Caffeine Tea, coffee, sodas make you go to the bathroom. They increase your urine production and you lose body water. So if you're an athlete and you're drinking tea and coffee and sodas on a regular basis, then you're, you're, counterprodu you're counterproductive to good performance. You've got, you'd, be, you'd be a lot better off just drinking plain water or a Gatorade or something like that. And I'm not telling you not to drink tea or coffee, but if you drink a fair amount of it, limit that, limit that. The other thing is alcohol. Uh, we had a, uh, it was, shoot, it was 10 years ago, I guess, and uh, in football, and, and it was a Wednesday night and all the football players went out and they partied. They partied hard. And they had a game on Saturday and they didn't do so good. And they thought by, you know, going out Wednesday and, and, and doing their party and get it out of the way, they'd still have Thursday and Friday and they'd do fine. They were dehydrated Thursday and Friday. They weren't paying attention to the urine color and being hydrated, carrying a bottle around. And, and that <coughs> night, a party affected their bodies in terms of their, their dehydration and hydration status to where they performed not up to their potential on Saturday. Uh, plus, it's not legal for anybody under 21, but I'm telling you, if, if you want to gain an edge on your competition, make sure that you're putting good nutrition in your body and you're staying hydrated. That's really, and, that, and, and, and get the edge on the other teams. The other thing is, let's say you don't have Powerade or Gatorade around, but you want something that has some energy, so you think, well, I'm going to drink some, some orange juice. That's got energy in it, just like Gatorade. But orange juice is really concentrated. A lot, it's almost double what Gatorade is. So, you know, don't even pay attention to the slide. The point is, if it's too concentrated a beverage, the 6% one is equivalent to what Gatorade is. And all that's saying is that the Gatorade's going down into your stomach just to like water does. But these others, are, are, the 9% is like an orange juice. It's got too much sugar in it. Uh, and so you don't absorb it that good. So if you did have orange juice, just put uh, two, three to one water, you know, maybe two cups, three cups of water to one cup of orange juice and dilute it out and it'll, it'll be fine. Now, weight. And I think what we'll do is we're gonna end up talking about this weight in the dining. How many, now where do, how many of you eat off campus? Okay. How, do, you, do you go out to eat or do you prepare? How many of you prepare food at home? That's good. That's darn good. Um, so you go grocery shopping, you buy your own food. You know, anybody ever heard of Mike Bobo, quarterback at Georgia? Uh, anyway, he played several years ago and played on some good teams. I took him and uh, I want to say Edwards, running back Robert Edwards, and took some of these guys and we went to Kroger and we took, I gave them a tour of the grocery store. I showed them what they needed to buy and what they didn't need to buy. <coughs> and they, they wanted it. They didn't know. They wanted to find out what to eat. And you know what we did? And then in the back room, what we did is Kroger put, on, put up a display and they, of the foods that I told them to buy, they had them sample ready cooked and ready to go and had samples for them and so forth. 
But all I'm, all I'm telling you is that spend some time in the grocery store looking at labels. Don't just run in there and run out. Look through some things because it's really important to make good selections in the context not only of overall nutrition but weight too. Uh, uh, I, can, I can tell not a lot of you guys have weight issues or, but you may have had weight issues coming in in August or something like that. The key thing is that you want to plan long enough ahead of time to, if you're, if you're going to try to lose weight. I'll never forget uh, Muhammad Ali had a fight and I want to say I think it was the Ken Norton fight uh, and he had gotten a little fat and sassy and he wasn't paying attention to, to what he should have been doing in training. He was doing too much television and all this and talking and, and so he was out of shape. So then he went on a quick weight loss program, training program to get ready and he didn't have the legs and he got beat. He, he, he lost too quickly and didn't have the energy and the stamina. He lost too much muscle and, he lost, and, and his energy levels were just too low from, from the restriction, the dieting that he was doing. So you don't want to do that. You want to allow enough time. You got to plan your food intake and uh, there's a simple way to look and to make sure that you're getting what you need to eat. And it sounds dumb, but that food guide pyramid, how many of you have seen that before? I tell you, it works. Just take your own diet and compare it to the pyramid and see where you're doing good. Fruit and vegetables, carbohydrates. It's an easy way to check your diet to see if you're doing what you need to be doing. If you try to lose weight too quickly, you lose muscle. Uh, your metabolic rate goes down. If you've ever tried to lose weight and you quit eating to lose weight and then you lose weight and then all of a sudden you, you still, you're not eating hardly anything and your weight's not going down. Your body's shutting off, it's protecting itself. So you can't lose weight that way. You gotta do it with uh, a little bit of more activity and cutting back a little bit on your food intake. Um, let me say one thing here. Let me go to here and then I'm gonna come back. So when you go, how many of you eat one meal in the dining hall? A, not many of you, a few of you. If you eat in the dining halls, look and see what's available that day. Don't just all of a sudden grab a tray and a plate and start putting on food here or there. Um, look, walk around, see what's available. Uh, if you're concerned about your weight and, and, and how much you're getting, if, if they serve you, tell them to reduce the serving size. But typically, the fried foods, the sweet teas, the cakes, the cookies, those are the things that, that should come later. All the good nutritious foods should come first, and then if you want to have something like that, you can have it. But we've got tips for you on uh, uh, eating in the dining halls and, and selecting out better uh, foods. Now with gaining weight, one of the secrets to gaining weight is to identify the periods of time where you're not eating. I had a, there was an athlete, a female athlete in here uh, a little bit ago, and she said that she practices early in the morning, so she can't eat that much. She eats like a little power bar or something like that. And then she doesn't eat until sometimes 10.30, and then usually it's lunchtime, 12.30. So she's got a gap from almost 6.30 at 12.30, well, she's not eating, she wants to gain weight. What, what would be the obvious thing? Is to, is to get some food during that period of time. So to plan the food intake, throw something in the backpack, uh, do what you can to carry a bagel and peanut butter, uh, have food already prepared in the refrigerator at home. One of the things that you guys are fortunate is that you, you, you're uh, athletes during a time when there's a lot of convenience stuff. Take advantage of it in the grocery store. For example, salad, you know, the lettuce stuff already washed and ready to go. You make salads. You got fresh fruit and vegetables already cut up and washed. Just get by bags. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's good. It's ready to go. Um, but for, for gaining weight, what you got to do is you got to identify those gaps that where you have where you're not eating and you got to fill them. So that means going to the grocery store, having food in your dorm or your apartment ready to go. So before you go to bed at night, that food that you're going to take with you needs to be ready to go right in the backpack and you're gone. 
And you may say, well, I want to take a turkey sandwich to eat as a snack mid-morning, and I don't have any kind of refrigeration. I tell you what, I shouldn't say this, <laughs> but usually it's going to be pretty safe. I mean, you can, you can always get one of those little ice packs or something and, and put it in a little container right next to it. Or you may have a, a, a cup of yogurt that's cold, you put it in, in, a, in a, a brown bag with the sandwich or whatever, and it's going to keep it cool enough. Take advantage of those gaps of time to eat. The other thing is uh, add peanut butter, glasses of milk, milkshakes, things like that, especially in the evening. And I think I'm going to, there are some resources. You can get so much off the web, it's unbelievable. But the ADA, American College of Sports Medicine, the Gatorade Sports Science Institute, you ought to look at that one. They've got some information that's incredible in terms of overall nutrition. I've got some great handouts for you. Uh, that we're going to give you uh, on carbohydrates, on supplements, fluids, and everything. But I always like this picture right here at the end. And that young little feline, that little kitty, now she's got a lot of confidence going uh, across all those German shepherds. And she's just as confident as she can be. And you've got to have that same confidence when you're going up against a Clemson uh, in basketball and the way to have that confidence is by knowing that you've done everything you can from the training standpoint. The coaches hopefully have done their job in preparing you, but you're taking care of business at home by good nutrition and fluids and food to give you that edge, which you can have uh, if you take advantage of it. So uh, does anybody have any questions at all? about? I'm, we're going to wind it up here. but. I'll be more than happy to answer a question if you have one afterwards or if you want to uh, ask one right now in front of the group or whatever. So thanks a lot.